happened was, was what happened was you one didn't give up. You I was working on it. Yeah. And uh, every now and then I was walking by his office and I look in there and uh, one day I just whoa that looks good. And it was the impact. You don't need that high rake pressure. So what they are doing actually, they go up to 140. Automatically. Yeah. yeah. And then the hammer and the can't cope with that pressure. Because of the extra volume. Yeah. 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 So you, if you go to 125, you're going to have plenty of power. Ah. But they think, oh shit, it's useless. Uh. <laughs> Oh, that I do. Mm -hmm. That I think I put it up. What's that? Okay, I'm going to do it. 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 Like I bounce a lot of ideas with Matt, and I like to work with Matt. Is great because he's brutally honest with you, like brutally honest. Honest, but let's see if I can find the green one. Is gonna stick like hell. You want to use a little bit of also fun. The, the eyes look at America. A lot of the content creators like yourself are in America, so it's very important to set the tone for the rest of the world to follow. If you want something really bad, you can do a miracle. AEAC is made possible by Air Venturi, Hawk Optics, Diana Air Guns, FX Air Guns, Day State, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK, H&N Sport, Aztec Optics, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Yeah, <clears throat> it started um, 1989. I bought uh, a spring rifle. And um, yeah, it, it was jumping when I pulled the trigger and it was singing, the whole spring mechanism was singing, you know, blah, 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 blah. and uh, I wasn't happy. So I started looking at it and uh, I come up with the idea of a gas ram system. And uh, it was quite easy because I see it on the cars and things like that. And I'm thinking, wow, if I can pump air into it from the outside, then it's going to be very powerful. So I made one of those. And um, yeah, I pump it up. And you can actually. I didn't know so much at that time as I know now. That you have to understand. So I pump it up like crazy, and I didn't get so much power because the piston just. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot, and I, I got that gun to shoot very well. And uh, but it still it was a lot of recall. Uh, you know the accuracy at that time wasn't that great. You're shooting at 25, 30 meter, and um, the pellet was not that great. I was using like Milbrew, TR, and, and Wasp, Bailey Wasp, but all kind of ammunition we're not using anymore. But anyway, I, I got the idea of a PCP where someone had a CO2 paintball rifle or a pistol. And, um, 
And I was thinking, yeah, wow, there's no recall, no recall. So I have to figure out how to make one myself. So I was sitting there with paper and pen and, and creating some kind of valve system. Mm. Um, and I create things and I, I start testing. And actually it's, it was working, uh, but not fantastic, but it was working, you know. Uh, and I learning, I, uh, my interest was so great. So, but the only thing mainly I was thinking about was create and get it better and things like that. So in the early day, I was using a lot of uh, CO2 and got that working. And then I started making pump guns, you know, pump them up. Yeah. And so the efficiency was so important also. Um, so I have to make very good valves. And, and that was the process. I was working and make my own guns. You know, I don't know how many I made, but I was a lot of guns by hand. And then um, I think it was 93, something like that. I decided I have to find a company. I have to find a company who can make this air rifle because I made a, a rifle I was really happy with. Uh -huh. So I find a company, it was not far away from where I live, it was like 20 minutes drive. So I show them what I had and um, and they was interested. So I start working there. So 1994 I start working there. And that rifle had an inbuilt pump system. So we we took the the gun and was traveling over to Webley and Scott and show them the gun because Webley and Scott have the same name mm -hmm. and it was already in, in the market. And they were really impressed with what they saw. They, they couldn't believe it. You know, 12 foot pound, one stroke, 12 foot pound, two stroke. And I was storing uh, the air. So five stroke, five shots. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. But it was very complicated. But there were so many things going on in that life. And, um, and they basically told us, we, we can't pay that kind of money for a rifle. It's going to be too expensive. So I was a little bit sad. We took off. And then when we come, I actually took the pump away and, and replaced it with the tube. So okay. turn it into a PCP rifle. Mm -hmm. And suddenly the cost was down. And the interest was sky high now um, because it was a PCP rifle. And this is in the very early days. What, what, year, what year around was this? 90? Uh, I had a meeting with them 95 or something like that. Can I ask another question? Yes. As I hear your story, there's two things that are occurring to me. One, that when you got your start, you owned an air gun, so you were an air gunner. I, you know, we, I was shooting air guns when I was six, seven years old. I was crazy about it. Yeah, so that was the first thing. And the other thing that's occurred to me is for you to be able to start designing and building on your own without a, this big support network. Do you have some sort of background in no. machining, no. engineering? I have to learn everything. I have to learn how to operate a, a lace machine, a milling machine. I have to learn by mistake, so, you know. So you're just borrowing friends' machines or going down to the local shop and paying to use their machines? No, when, when you, no when you I bought my own machine, but okay. small machines, not big fancy machines. All right. And, but you, if if you want something really bad, you can do a miracle. And you just wanted it. Yeah. You wanted better. So bad. So you've had this thing about improving since you were six or seven I'll years old. Uh, yeah, I had a dream <laughs> of having a rifle with no recoil, and you're going to hit everything. You know, that's what my my goal. And that was my vision when I was young. Mm -hmm. But I remember I have a vague memory from when I was six, seven years old, and. Uh, my dad had uh, both an air rifle with a scope on, and I think it was a BSA Mercury. I've been thinking about it. I remember vaguely what it looked like. And I was in my room, and there was uh, a lamp outside, you know, 50, 40, 30 meters away. I don't know, remember how far away it was. But I remember I opened my window. This was in the middle of the night, like or evening or something like that, and I was very young. I put the pellet in there. And I was aiming, and suddenly, you know, I saw the cross set perfect to that lamp, and I pulled the trigger. <laughs> no more lamp? <laughs> no more lamp. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, there was something that fascinated me, was um, 
having an air rifle, uh, hardly no sound, super accurate, no recall and things like that. So, so we're early 90s and the creator in you has been born. Yeah. And you've got this idea now. So, you know, did, as you progressed your way towards this FX air guns, was it always air guns that you designed, manufactured, and successfully sold? You were sharing a story with me in the car yesterday. Yeah, the, we start with... Um, before air guns. Before air guns. Yeah, the paintball. No, that so was uh, the paintball thing was 2006. Oh, okay. So, I mean, part of it, uh, go back to 95, though, because yeah, we go back still to the word, like the... You put a cylinder on because it's yeah. It's very I, I put a cylinder on that count, and uh, and Webley and Scott said uh, we want it. So what we did was producing a gun and uh, just the action, mm -hmm. and they they bought the stock from uh, Thiele. So and we named it Webley Axel, and uh, and they they will start buying good numbers at that time. You have to understand. I think they bought 200 guns per month, um, and the only thing on the market that, that they, they were dazed it was there, but Bagley, um, they had, uh, I think they were quite expensive at that time, and Air Arms was there, um, for sure, um, later on BSA come in the market, oh, they was also there a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but we were selling good numbers, compared oh. with the others. With, of guns or the cylinders? The guns. Well, selling the guns. The, uh, you have action. to understand. The action. Yeah, yeah. 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 the action. Yeah. And they put the rest together. The okay. The so those actions were made by Baby FX. Yeah. But uh, I was there for four years at that company and I create the hand pump. I'm the inventor of the hand pump. So Before uh, Hill. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Hill start making hand pumps 2001, 2002, okay. maybe 2003, mm -hmm. something like that. So, uh, and, um, and it was uh, Bill Saunders was, took a hand pump from FX and showed that for Hill. And um, so they interfered in my patent. So we sent them a letter through lawyers. Mm. Yeah, but they did a few change here and there. And, uh, and they was claiming there's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it was a lot of bullshit. But I'm the inventor of the hand pump, so the hand pump is the key to the PCP market. At that time, mm -hmm. without the hand pump, forget it. There is no market. Yeah, so, there's uh, no compressor that's going to fill no. that PSI. Now it's different. Now, no one needs the hand pump, really. There's so many other things. There's compressors, diamond bottle, and a lot of things. Uh, but at that time, the hand pump was crucial. So, it, you know, as a real innovator, it can be said with validity that all of this, I mean, all these air gun PCPs that we enjoy today are in a large part because, yeah, because of, of that, that pump yeah. that kind of spawned the whole thing. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. And then uh, I was there for four years and then I was fed up for many reasons. And just one morning I said, no more. I just go home, leave all my patent, everything, I just leave it behind. Just no more. And then, three months later, I started FX again. What year was that? 1999. 1999. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. This property that we're on today, Yeah. when you started FX Airguns in 1999, it was, was that here? No, it was in this town. <laughs> okay. But it was much smaller, much, much smaller. In the beginning, it was me and one employed person. It was two people. And then three, four months later, uh, when we have started production, first I was only me mm -hmm. to do all the design and things like that. But then we was two for three, four months. We're talking production time now then. And then Ganilla come on board and Andreas come on board. So we was four people. And then we grow again, it was five people. And then quite quickly we was seven or eight people. So before we move on to the next question, it's the early 2000s. What were your first three air guns? We was producing. Yeah, 99, 2000, 2001, yeah, 2000, back one at that time. It was the FX 2000. That was the first one. 
and then uh, we made uh, two shots, a uh, special gun for Dynamite Nobel. They, for some reason, they want to have two shots hmm. gun. And they, they call it the, uh, the ra uh, RBS Rapier. They call it the Rapier. Yeah. And uh, and then later on, they want to have it in the magazine. They call it um, Excalibur. We, we made a beautiful stock for that one. Beautiful. Unbelievable beautiful. Um, so that was the three first guns. And then, I think it was 2001, I made the Cyclone. And then we made... Um, Cutlass. Cutlass, yes. Yeah. Yes. Gladiator also. The Ultimate. The Ultimate was the Rick Loader. Mm -hmm. um, what else did we That was do? quite a good breach. The, the cyclone. I mean, there's a lot of guns that came from that breach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the cyclone had biathlon kind of reloading mechanism. Mm -hmm. We still the power adjuster. <laughs> Very cool. But we still yeah. have people sending in those to be worked on or resealed today. I mean, these old guns. Amazing from the early two thousand. Solid. And also yeah. the cyclone, you can take the tube off and off. You have the inbuilt uh, valve system. Yeah, where it automatically shuts off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was two thousand and one. Okay, so now we're in the mid two thousands. Yeah. When did this facility, when did you move FX here? Now, what happened first, it was located here in Maristad. Mm -hmm. In 2001, we moved from Maristad to another village, which is about 20 minutes drive from here. So we, the first place had about 170 square meter. Uh, so it was too little. And we was growing too fast. So I find a building and I bought that one. And it had 700 square meter. So Wow, big. Yeah, it was big, and, and big enough. So, um, and we we move up there, and uh, slowly but surely, it was growing a little bit. So, I think it was around 2005. I then made a revolution, the semi-automatic rifle. Mm -hmm. I remember. Uh, so I made that one 2005, and then half a year, a year later, I made a Monsoon as well. So I have two semi-automatic rifles, and we was the only semi-automatic on the market. Something just occurred to me that I, f I feel like it's important to ask you for these guys. Yeah. All of these guns, uh, I know you said, you know, you brought on two people, then three, then four, then five, and it grew and grew and grew. Are you bringing on people that are conceiving of the ideas, or have you always been the idea man? I... Put it this way, I have always been the idea man. Uh, but when you want to start working for me, uh, we're working together. Um, one interesting thing is uh, the impact. At that, when we create the impact, we was create. We had actually, I think, it was seven or eight different guns in the computer, and it was explosive um, time frame. I want to do things quick, you know. It was like within a couple of weeks. No, we were talking days. Yeah, just designed all these guns. In days, we I, I was spinning out eight new guns, and it was semi-automatic guns, it was crazy guns, and um, it was the Wildcat, the Impact, and all kind of guns in there, and we was like working on one gun, and then, all oh, right, next one, and next one. And we, it was so they're crazy. all being born together. Yeah, and um, and the new one was. He did all the drawings. We were sitting together, but he was running the computer. The cat. So I could focus without thinking about how to do that and that. And in the meantime, he, he had to think I could think about other things. But the funny thing was, we had great guns in there. And one of the guns in there was the impact. And the idea was we should have a gun where you can adjust everything from the outside. Regulator, change caliber, everything, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But it was a quite ugly gun. <laughs> didn't have the look. So it was that close we didn't do the impact because it didn't have the look. And it turns out that look is what so many people love. Well, yeah, what happened look, was, what happened was, Yuan didn't give up. Yuan was working on it. Yeah. And uh, every now and then I was walking by his office and I look in there and uh, one day I just, whoa, shit, that looks good. And it was the impact. Well, so he transformed an ugly thing to something which was looked very much like it is today. 
Well, I, I have questions for you on yeah? it, but we'll get to those. Yeah. But since you're kind of telling the story of how it all started, how what's your earliest memory of Dad kind of playing with air guns, bringing them home? It's a work thing now. I remember the hand pumps quite a bit when I was growing up. It was always testing them and also the compressor you made. Yeah, I made the compressor also, yeah. I remember him testing it over and over again at home to make yeah. certain it was working. So I was testing it a lot at home. Every single night it was running, 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 running. Yeah, but it, it's not only that. I took that compressor wherever we was going. We was invited to a party. I just bring the compressor because I was, it was running against an overpressure valve, all right? So I just put in the room there, plug it in and let it run. <laughs> we was there for a party the whole evening. <laughs> so you just maxed it out and wanted to see yeah. how long it would take to die? Um, I had uh, like four weeks to find out and it was running day and night. How old were you when, when you thought enough of it or you were old enough to realize you wanted to be a part of it? Because I imagine that's kind of a big deal mm, it's you know, been, for a young man growing up. It's been back and forth quite a bit. It's it's never been a clear-cut case. I, when I graduated from school, I went to a different town for a, for one and a half years. And at, at the time when uh, the workplace I worked at, um, the owner was going down in time a lot, and he was uh, yeah, the, yeah, reconstructing the business. So I was out of a job at the same time. He needed more people at his factory, and that's how I got into the air gun industry, basically. But I was always shooting, like as soon as he had open days, I was out there shooting with them and all that. But, yeah, it wasn't a clear-cut case. So you're an air gunner, but to, to make that life decision, yeah, that you wanted to, this you to be your to, career. You have well, it was to a gradual it differently. Process. Working together with your father. I, I know. I, <laughs> let me speak I mean, to, that, that's the thing. My best friend yeah. works with his dad. Yeah. Huh? And it, it's been very difficult for him over the years. Yeah. Very difficult. But they do great things together. I imagine maybe there's some of that here too. We we had more problem in the early days. <laughs> uh, now it's much much better. Okay. Oh, much much better. Um, but I think you are growing uh, and knowing more, and I relax a little bit more because he, he knowledge is so high. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great combination. Yeah. You guys have. <laughs> and uh, now we help one another now. Uh, before that was a little bit like babysitting him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's wrong word though, but you know, I have look over his shoulder and see what he was doing, if he was doing right and things like that. Mm -hmm. And of course, if I, if I had any feeling he didn't do right, then, then I can tell you very friendly or I just... <laughs> yeah, be know, dad. Yeah, you know, <laughs> a little bit rough. Yeah, maybe, patient you know. way or impatient way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That must have been tough. No, but it's it's we've always been fighting back and forth, but we never have ever had a grudge. Like we could be fighting like crazy here, but five minutes later, yeah, like, get it. That's yeah. The key. we have to like we're not even gonna go have, hold hold a grudge. We could be fighting here like keep, like you know tomorrow, but five minutes but later, it's a long time ago. No, now. but when we're done with it, it's yeah. just done. That's like, it. I, we yeah, then we the talk about the fishing, whatever. It's just when it's done, it's done. That's, that's cool. That's. You have to take it as uh, workplace is work. That's that's a different thing. Well, if we go back a little bit in history again, though. Okay, uh, here we go. <laughs> uh, we was moving to that seven hundred square meter place, and in the end, I got so much order, and we was at that time I think it was fourteen people, and there was no more space for more people, and I'm thinking the order book was that much. Do you understand what I mean? It, it was that much. And I look at the order book and every customer had, had orders in there. So what it was like, I'm thinking, yeah, I, I need more people. I need to more, do more to actually see how big the order book is. Because you come to a certain point when people have to wait too long and blah, blah, blah. It's not going to grow. It's just going to stay there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had the idea, I need a new place. So I find these 2013. And I was in here for about five minutes and I call them. I, I take it. So I need it, but mm -hmm. it was so big. It was mm -hmm. From 700 
to over 6,000 square meters. Well, in That's 60,000 <laughs> square foot. In 2013, how many FX ploy employees were there? Similar to, the, to today or different? Oh, it's different. Okay. Uh, we, 14, I think it was 15. 14 or 15 people at okay. the time. So I knew there is no way we can handle these buildings. I need renters. So I find a lot of renters. So it was like two business. Renting out and, and making area. Yeah, there's a coffee shop downstairs. Yeah, it was several companies. Uh -huh. Yeah, because you had so much space. You knew yeah. you wanted the building, but then yeah. it's like shit, you know, how but, to uh, get it in. But when we moved here, we got more space. We can employ more people. The more guns we were making, more order I got in. It was like there was no limit. We uh -huh. could just make more and more and more and more and more orders coming in. Everyone was super excited. All the dealers, importers, wow. Uh, we get stuff now. We don't have to wait forever. So, uh, and they was excited, and, and customers was excited because they get their stuff faster. So, and we have the room for it. So, today we are 65 people here, mm -hmm. and we using almost the whole building ourselves, which is quite crazy. And I noticed you just added an added yeah. a wing. We yeah. we expand the building, which is crazy. Um, but that's the way it is. <laughs> like but we are 65 people in Sweden, 13 yeah. in America, so yeah. How many countries do you sell your products in? 40 something? I have no idea. I, think it's I have no idea. Yeah, I think it's 42 countries. <laughs> it's scrolling countries. every single week. Geez. I think it is 42. I think Andreas told me the other day. 42 countries. Yes. Well, and I think you can mentioned that it's how many years growth in a row i mean it's every year it's growing, uh, growing substantially year, yeah, yeah. Yeah. well it goes back we, to we got reward from uh <laughs> this is uh, the the year's super company because we're doing so well we are growing unbelievable uh, it goes back to your story where you where you you know at that time when you transitioned into this building it's like the more you made, the more people bought, the more people bought, the more people became aware, the more you needed, the more you're dealing, you know, it's just this, this ascending snowball, yeah. upward hill rolling snowball, yeah. if you will. I'll say that Frederick, and then, you know, it rolls downhill, and Johan and the, and the team, the, the instincts of knowing when to, the growth, the risk reward, you know, some people get freaked out with that, instead of, Frederick always has that long-term vision of knowing, mm -hmm. Because oftentimes people don't reach because you know fear, what ifs, instead of just that confidence of knowing and then creating space. Like you said, you moved, you moved into the 700 square foot and you filled it. Mm -hmm. No, 700 square meter. Square meter, yeah. And then you move to 60,000 square meter and it's... No, 60,000 oh. square foot or 6,000 square 6, meter. 6,000 square yeah. meter. Yeah. We got that. So you moved into 6,000 square meter and it's not that many years and now you've filled it and expanded. Yeah, it's full. You, it's, crazy. It, it's that vision of what's not what's needed today, what's needed a year from now, mm -hmm. what's needed five years from now, right? And following those instincts, and 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 then culturally, but, everyone here. But it is quite easy them. for me because I am so into the arrogant thing. So I have yeah. a very good feeling of what people want mm -hmm. because that's what I'm self for. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to ask and, and try to figure out and ask the market what they want because the market. There they are, they're going to say certain things, which is, I don't know that already. So I just try to add things they haven't thought about. But when they see it, they want it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so power adjusters and all kind of stuff uh, have, been, have been important, um, and people like that. They like when you're making a light rifle, not too heavy. Mm -hmm. And the look is important, uh, accuracy is super important. Um, and all those things. So we, we have been very good from the beginning to add things to guns, which people want. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think off, also there's there's that difference of can and should. There's a lot of things that Frederick and FX can do, but it's not it's, it's always that carefully what should yeah. be done. Mm -hmm. What what features really matter instead and, of mm -hmm. they can do all sorts of crazy mm -hmm. things. I know there's ideas you've sat on because it's like nah, it's not but what people really want. Or need. I think we had through the years. 10 or 12 different patents. Tell me how many air gun companies have 12 patents. I don't know. No. I honestly don't know. The new one born last week. Yeah, the new <laughs> one last week, yeah. We'll get to that, So, or maybe we won't. But um, 
I, I know that as an organization, you need to be protective of your numbers because there's competition out there. And, and, and in protecting the integrity of FX is more important than anything. But, you know, one of the common feelings that the community and the market has is where is my FX air gun? You know, and, and I can't help but feel like the, and I didn't realize that till I got here, but the best way to answer that question is maybe to share some idea of the incredible, like when you told me yesterday how many impacts you've made and how many go out a day, and then I actually see it, the empty locker, the raw parts, it fill up with, you know, all those guns in a day, That then it clicked for me. But to get it to click for those guys, I mean, the numbers are just mind-blowing. Yeah, I know. And the, <laughs> you're hearing rumors of ethics, of quality problem and things like that. But they just compare us with the other brands. And uh, I don't know their number, but talking to dealers and things like that is that uh, we making so much gun compared with anyone else. And if you take that calculation, uh, if you have a problem with one in 500, um, and if, if you're making a couple of thousand guns per year, that's, really good. that's not the big issue. Yeah. But if you're making the number we are making, <laughs> which is... <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? No, I'm not going to reveal that, but you see it for yourself. Yeah, I did, I did and it, it quickly came into focus for me, just the immense pressure that's put on to you guys to provide that product. And um, it's, it, it's, it's remarkable, and I guess I'll leave it at that. Um, so let's move on here. So. I was just going to let them know. Yeah. You got 65 employees stampeding up into the break room, <laughs> the kitchen, yeah. the lounge. I mean, that's all behind us. But, you know, that segues almost perfectly into this next question is, you know, when I'm touring your facility, I see, I notice that they shifted. Uh, uh, a man or woman that was on one station yesterday is on a different station doing something different today. And I find it also very interesting that the same men and women that are assembling guns, you see also taking pride in, I mean, they're literally scrubbing toilets, taking out the trash, sweeping up the facility. So my question is, to have success and growth at the levels you guys have, it's, it doesn't happen by accident. And it doesn't happen because of just one person, right? It takes a special company culture to make that all work. What is your company culture? It's, uh, we are, we, we are all sitting down there and putting guns together, right? Yeah, yeah. I've done it all, everything. And, um, and I, know, I know how it is to be down there. So, um, same thing, we, we put it like this. You have, we have supplier also, there is, we buy things in, and parts, so we can't make everything ourselves. But they are part of our family, as well as our customer are. And we, we, the whole philosophy is the same with our employees, part of our family. We treat them very well. That's kind of what I was going to get into. You know, I'm looking behind us here. There's two, and four, four, six, six eight. Uh, There's like 14 microwaves, like five giant refrigerators. They're all stocked with food. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're eating your food. I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, there's a giant break room. There's a there's like a spa lounge over there. Yeah. I see people taking a break after three four hours of work. You know, it's a and everyone's they're having a genuine good time. I feel like it's not because I'm here with the camera. No. no. Like, how do you create that when you interview somebody? How in the world do you create that culture and let them know? But it's easy now because you're different here. If you're 65 people and you are the only one who are different, uh -huh. then you adapt. <laughs> okay, so they quickly learn. No, yeah. it's also like if you interview someone, the, the question you should ask yourself, how would you feel if your sister, your brother, your father came home with that person? Would you be okay with that? It's like that's a person. Uh, okay. It's a part of family. You meet them every single day. You speak with these people more than you do with any with other person own. out there. Uh -huh. So it's really important that everyone finds their place. Uh, and yeah. we have no issues with that and everyone is dependent on each other it seems we like we have to respect the customers you know, we have to respect the customers and they do understand that we're making products that do end up costing the customers 1500 800 900 dollars and you know what you expect yourself when you buy something for that cost 
So they're very careful. If they find something that they don't think is acceptable downstairs, I'll have people in my office wondering why is this like this, and then we'll have to go fix it. Yeah. So they they won't just feel oh, this is sounding really weird. Let's just skip it. Now they'll go up and grab me, grab my father, or grab the someone else, and just make certain that it gets fixed and the guns that we do send out doesn't have an issue. Well, I observed that yeah. in your facility, and, and it was. You know, to me, that's not normal in a manufacturing. No, but you cu have culture. It's part of your day-to-day -day life. You want to feel pride. Like you don't want to. You don't want to go to your work and don't feel pride in what you do. You want to be certain that, like, you spend your time on. You want to be certain that what you produce and what you send out is going to make the end user or the customer yeah. happy. And, and it's not lip service. You know, I got it on camera. You know. One of these people will, you know, they'll have a question on a part they're working on, and you'll see them get up and walk over to another station, and they'll ask questions, and then all of a sudden there's three or four of them, like in a huddle, around the, no, really, like yeah. trying to, you know, make understand sure and make sure, and there, there's a lot of layers of, of, um, of guarding and protecting of the FX brand there that really kind of blew my mind. Hmm. It's just, that culture piece is just, it's amazing. Here's a little thing that's... It, it, you probably don't realize, but when you go down to the floor, you see that um, it's it's not by it's by choice how many people are wearing FX gear. They're not forced to, but it's because there's pride in what they're doing. There's pride of being a part of this. So then they're you know you see the footage. Almost everyone's wearing FX gear. Yeah. Because the, they know they're part of something special. On Instagram yesterday, some I was taking pictures and sharing them, and somebody asked. If those were uniforms, everyone's wearing the same thing. Are they required to wear uniforms? So you an you answered that question. Yeah. yeah, it's all by choice. And why wouldn't I mean? You want to be part of a winning team. This is this is a winning team and pride in what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's it's truly something the special synergy. you guys have created yeah. here, and it's just it's interesting. And and you spoke to it. It all yeah. distills down to customer experience. Yeah, and respecting yeah. everyone. Like, you have to respect someone that's willing to pay the kind of money that you have to pay for an air gun. You have to respect the customer that's willing to pay that for their hobby. Mm -hmm. and we're always behind our product. If someone has an issue, we're always going to do our very best to help him out, fix it as soon as possible. Because, yeah, you spent your money with us. We want to make certain that you are happy with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, your last name isn't FX, but so to speak, your name is on the gun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Yeah. It's yeah. yours. Yeah, it shows and it matters. Um, in this, you know, this next question, I kind of answered myself prematurely, but did the, and I, but I wanted to hear from maybe you on on this, because you're downstairs so often. I see you intermingling with everyone. Do the gun assemblers rotate around, or the, do they do the basically the same thing, day in and day out? And are and are they permitted to contribute their ideas for a better way of doing things? Maybe to be able to understand what you're doing, you can't just do one part all the time. You don't, we will not learn what you're doing and why you're doing it, so you will not know when you're doing something wrong or when something isn't right. So of course we try to rotate them as often as possible so every single person after a few weeks knows exactly how to do the gun from start to finish and knows how everything's supposed to work. Because mm -hmm. without that knowledge you're not, you're not going to know if you're doing something wrong, if some, a part is wrong, you're just not going to know it. So you have to rotate people and have make certain that they learn. And if it's something is wrong, they're going to yeah, bring it up, and if they can f have something that they think is, it's going to be better, of course going to bring it up, mm -hmm. and of course, of course going to listen. And it's legit, when I was here in October, I, you guys can tell me his name, but the, the big guy with the long hair who always walks around with his heads up, <laughs> <laughs> what's his name? Axel. Axel, yeah. yeah, he was assembling impact receivers in October when I was here. But all this week I've seen him, you know, kind of in like the final QC, testing triggers, Safeties, putting the bottle on, taking shots, you know. Yeah. These, you know, they, they definitely move around. Yeah, definitely. It's cool. It's cool. Um, Port Precision is a company that we work very closely with. The, um, they have excellent staff and excellent people there that just helps us when we six years ago when we were looking into making the wildcat and the impact uh, we had other suppliers uh, and we were used to getting no's we can't do that can't do that it's too expensive it's impossible mm -hmm. but then we started working with part precision and everything we was asked them to do is yes we can do that and we asked the next person can you do this 
Yes, we can do that. Can we do this? Yes, we can do this. Um, so that just helped us a lot in creating new things. Uh, it, they don't limit us in any way, so they're really, really good. Um, they have um, 26 people working with the CNC machines. Uh, we are by far their biggest customer, okay. uh, but they really do help working. And when we walk in there, the, every single one of them are very helpful. They're very keen on doing what's, r what's right, uh, make sure everything's right. They take pride in making all the parts. If we set up tolerances together and we, we look at all the parts together and make certain that this machine that does this part for that gun goes against this machine that does that part. So they work together with each other to make certain the quality is just mm -hmm. very good. And now we have our 100% our own machine shop here as well, which uh, is run um, by Emil, which is a great guy that is very well driven. And he has two guys under him, Andreas and Max, who are also very good hard-working guys so you can't find any more hard-working guys out there yeah. they're able to run 10 machines on three people and they're making certain that we can produce parts uh, at, a, at a very very good price which will make certain that we will be very competitive with our prices in the future as well um, and when, when did that come about the new the new machine shop uh, the new machine shop moved here second week of January 2020 okay and I noticed it's starting to fill up with machines. Yes. But you mentioned yesterday there's a special machine coming. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, it's a fantastic pr production machine. It can do almost anything. And it's expensive, of course, and fast. And, you know, high-tech machine. Mm -hmm. That's all you want to say about it? Uh, no, basically, we're, we're, <laughs> we're, buying, we're buying more mach the new machines now. And we're making certain that and we buy the machines that are correct for us because we are starting now to produce a lot of air guns every single day uh, so we have quantities going up and up and up mm -hmm. so we want to make machines that are able to do big numbers uh, of production of bigger parts so this, this new machine is milling the parts from three different angles at the same time and making certain that the production time for all the parts goes down which means the price of the parts so goes down time is money yes time is money and everything especially CNC machines they count each second uh -huh. um, and we just want to make certain that we're able to stay competitive in the future this is going to guarantee that we're going to be able to do that okay okay so I over the last few days I see you in those shops a lot and it's literally a hundred steps from your office yeah so I guess there's probably something important to be said about having all of that here which gives you a very high level of involvement yeah we've been doing prototype now parts now before IWA and we've been able to run several prototype parts each single day. We have six machines doing prototype parts and we're doing, able to test them within seconds of each other and make certain that everything is alright. We don't have to get one prototype part, wait for the next, wait for the next. Then we get everything together and then we build it and then, mm -hmm. oh, this is wrong, we have to do it all over again. So we're able to get all the six parts at the same time and we're testing all the six parts and just making it, making it perfect directly and just we're able to run production parts the same day, basically. And you don't it's lose the momentum. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's it's coming into focus now. Invent, refine, and you guys are like in this endless loop, and that kind of answers the, this next question. What motivates you guys to feverishly innovate at the high level and pace that you do? Like you said, you do it when you just get an idea, but. No, What's I, driving you? Yeah, but pushes I, you? The passion from the beginning. You know, I love air guns. So, uh, and then you have a new product, the new guns, and then you had it for a while, then, then it's quite boring. Then you need to come up with something new and mm -hmm. get excited again. And, uh, and it could be a new barrel, it could be anything really, which is air gun related though, um, or not. Uh, but you, a person like me wants something going on all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, were you, did you have a higher drive in the beginning, would you say, or today? Uh, the competitive drive? I was crazier in the beginning, I should say. I w was absolutely crazier. Uh, I'm more wise now. I, I, I don't have to go bananas. Uh, the, the, from idea to production mm -hmm. is much faster for me now. Mm -hmm. Focused, yeah. yeah, in the early days I didn't have what I'm having now. Sure. All these machines and it was much, much harder. So 
that's what's requiring a lot of energy in the early days. Well, from their perspective, you're still going bananas. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really. Yeah. Well, we laugh about it. Yeah. But yeah, it's just... It's high up. Well, and Frederick's very good as well as uh, you're always... You're crowdsourcing. You're, you're trying to gain info, you know, if Ted or Matt or Ernest or someone, you're always bouncing yeah. off ideas. Oh, they can come up with Yeah, it doesn't matter where the idea comes from. It's no. w w what's going to move things forward. If you like it and you think we'll like it, you yeah. make it. It's really as simple as that. It I feel like we have a good touch. If we don't get excited about it, we understand that we want to make certain that what we release is something that we get excited about. Mm -hmm. And if we get excited about it, we, we do know, like, yeah, this is going to be good and this is not going to be good. We, we have quite a good touch on that, I would say. Um, you can see it. And I've heard you speak to that. You know, you get around and you see, well, let's just make something because we, you know, maybe they'll like it. But it's like you guys, you take yeah. it really seriously. You scrap it unless you really think we're going to love it. If we come up with an idea, we instantly feeling like, no, it's not the market for it. We scrap more things than we will ever. Then we just drop it. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, then, yeah, there's no do. ego, and if it's a bad idea, it doesn't work. No. Just move on. It was a, we're working on a project right now, and we, there was something on that project we are working on, and instantly, me and you are thinking the same thing, mm -hmm. and uh, you know what I'm talking about. And we instantly, same time, we change that. And it was something we add on there, or you know, we're a little bit proud. It was quite an interesting thing, but mm -hmm. we realized at the same moment we took that part off that design. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was quite interesting because at the same moment, it's sort of the same thing. It's almost like there's a confidence and, about, about you. But we have come so far, so take that off was actually a very big decision. Yeah, that's what I mean. There's a confidence about you where yeah. you've had so much success that you don't, there's not a lot of second guessing. You, it's like if, if, you've, if you have a strong feeling that we'll like it, yeah. you're good and you go forward and you do it. You know, there's no screwing around, it seems like. Uh, no, and if, like, we don't mind, like, for now, we could have just done what we have had and what we had, but we felt like it just, it's just a minor change, but it's going to end up taking a lot more hours now for yeah. me. Uh, for me. <laughs> me. <laughs> but it's, like, there's no question about it, of course, gonna, if it's going to improve the product, like, 1%, of course, we're going to do it always. Yeah. And why wait? Do yeah. It right away. Yeah. Well, that's a, you know, that, that... That's a question I actually had for them later on in in, in my little. Uh, and like for example, we run like we we do produce all our stuff. We only produce it like two months ahead, and we do it every two months because we want to make able make certain that we get the best product out there. So if we want to have a change, we want to be able to do it quickly, and th that's a very hard a headache way to do it because it means that you will have to run every single part every second month. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of extra work, but it just keeps us on, us on our feet and we're able to adapt, and adjust, and change. If you have any issues, we, should, we are able to fix it so quickly. Uh, and it's keeping our quality control under check and it's making certain that everyone is on their feet. Well, you want that flexibility of making yeah. the change and not, well, we can't do it because we have eight months worth of this or that. Yeah. You want to do what's right by the shooters. Well, that, that, this might be a perfect question for you. and I'm. I'm jumping ahead, John, but there's two schools of thought, right? There's like there's what we're all accustomed to. There's the automotive industry, mm -hmm. and with the the al the annual calendar year, you can expect that all the changes are going to be made, them. and you wait until then. And we're all conditioned to that. But then there's like FX air guns, and you may make a revision to a to a rifle, 15 times, or maybe that's excessive. Maybe it's five. Maybe it's ten, throughout the year. Yeah. Well, and there's, there's two edges of that sword, and there's yeah, there's the one yeah. they fuss about. But what are the, what's a more positive or brighter outlook on that? Well, you're right. I mean, Johan just mentioned it too. There's a lot that goes into being nimble, right? Yeah. There's a lot of just-in-time inventory, so you can be adjustable. I mean, that's the downside that we're happy to handle because the plus side for the shooter, and oftentimes when we're making those changes, is whenever possible, making sure it's backwards compatible. Like the power plan that came out of the impact. This could be added to a five-year-old impact, and that gun is every bit is, you know, useful. Mm -hmm. um, it's always, whenever possible, right? Um, trying to do make good by the user and being nimble, and 
and it's not that cycle of well next year there's a new model it's like let's do it today let's let's do it as quickly as possible you know when we upgraded the, the, the smooth twist x barrels on the impact let's get them out there and, you know take care of the people that just bought one um so the takeaway the greater good yeah for the shooter isn't we're going to force all of our customers to buy the whole new gun you know that that's not that's not yeah. the objective here it's to make the little changes make them retrofitable well, what happens is the innovation speeds up what you can have, you know, this time this year, what the impact is versus five years. If you do a normal cycle, it's not the gun today, it is that if, if you do that slow down cycle. Mm -hmm. And then it loses the energy. There's a certain energy of yeah. those innovations of better, more efficient. I mean, that's the drive uh, for, for these guys, right? What can a gun do? And what's more respectful for the end user? Like, either, either you find a way to improve the gun drastically. Are going to wait eight months to do it and sell eight months worth of guns that aren't up to the specs that you know you already have a solution for? That's nothing we think like that's not going to excite me. That's not good me. for the customer. It's not going to like I understand the customer just bought an impact before the power plan came out, but we made our best to help those customers out right. as quickly as possible. But it's not our way of just waiting eight months to release it because we have a lot of backwards or impact you want to get it out right now because that's going to help us in the longer term because the yeah. agro industry is still very small compared to what it can be and should be in the future mm -hmm. and what you just said is important there's it, it would be worse if we waited eight months and sat on something mm -hmm. right that's the, the, what he <laughs> the path that you on went down is what i was trying to pull yeah. out of you yeah. it, and so this this is great you know it's a it's a it's a it's a cultural yeah it's a cultural choice you, know, you feel like it's the better mm -hmm. way it's more yeah, for them. The, yeah, it's more the lesser of two evils. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to do different in the future. Uh, you remember even last year we was launching twenty new. Oh stuff. yeah, I remember we the, was, the Congo was, line. We, we <laughs> was pretending it was twenty. It was actually twenty four. Mm -hmm. We were celebrating uh, twenty years, and uh, most of those things is out there already in production. And, um, the nine millimeter though. Just mm -hmm. now. Yeah, the magazine. It's now in production. Magazine tooling took a long, long time, but it's now in production. Yeah. But yeah, the shift. So um, the shift. And and you see all the new stuff here right now. Yeah. Uh, but we may do it differently in the future. Just not maybe waiting for the the big shows or whatever. It could be random. Okay. Yeah, yeah. when it's ready and in production. Yeah. Launch Let's get it. it out there. Yeah, of course. Launch it. What we're finding is people can be very upset waiting a couple of months. So we yeah, may we not close tell them, but just, just tap them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if they don't see something this month, we'll wait. Why did why first? Why did you start FX USA? Why? Yeah. Why? Um, and what's his role? Yeah, it's very important. How'd you choose uh, him? Uh, yeah. He was stupid enough to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have added a lot of gray <laughs> since, since you opened Wilmington. No, but I heard rumors he was free. I contacted him. And, uh, and we had a meeting and he liked the idea. What did you like about him? He's your guy, obviously. Uh, he, Why is he your guy? He is very good in promoting things. Uh, and, and, and a business-minded person, you know. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, and I, that's what you need. Um, uh, and John is perfect. He's it, good. You know how... I don't know. He's having a hard time saying nice things about you. No, no, it's okay. No, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know Obviously, he thinks explain, a lot but, of you. But, oh, yeah, no, that's but without doubt. But. You need good people, and John is a good person. He, he knows business. He knows America. He know, you know, I don't have to be worried. What's his role? Taking care of uh, FX USA, which is delivering, take care of service, and keep dealers and everyone happy. What is FX yeah. USA? Yeah, if, uh, if the American market is so important for the worldwide market, right? Yeah. Um, the, the eyes look at America. A lot of the content creators like yourself are in America, so it's very important to set the tone for the rest of the world to follow. Um, so, you know, there's the there's the logistics and service, but then there's also the, the, the marketing and messaging. We have such an amazing product that a lot of times people don't know what they don't know, especially in a growing industry with air guns. 
So you have new people all the time coming into air guns. Um, they need to know uh, why, an, why an air gun period is so amazing, right? And then let alone why FX is different. So it's a lot of that, that marketing messaging to make sure people understand what the, the options is there. Somebody's, you know, Yon was saying earlier, if somebody decides to spend 1000 to $2,000 on something or to decide that air guns is a hobby for them, we take that very seriously. We don't want someone buying an air gun and collecting dust in the corner. Mm -hmm. We want them buying it, getting the right knowledge so they can use the tool the right way and it creates something to be a lifetime of enjoyment. Mm -hmm. um, we know with the FX and when we do our, our job properly, they're getting these guns, they're pulling the trigger again and again. Uh, there's the passion, I mean, we see it. Uh, people are shooting these guns. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a very serious responsibility. And, and partly it's to make sure that Johan and Frederick I don't want them waking up dealing with headaches of logistics or other things in America. I want them waking up thinking about what's next. You mentioned a model. So FX USA is maybe a model for other similar type facilities around the world. Yeah, I, I think, you know, it's important because you asked Frederick earlier a little bit, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk to it. Like, why, why have the sister company? We, our job is solely to distribute to the dealers to support them, to not undercut them at all. I mean, FX USA doesn't sell to the public at all. Mm -hmm. That's by design, because we know how important, how much uh, work the dealers are doing. Uh, they're on the front lines, they're educating. I mean, we all remember the first time that we got into it, what an air gun was, and learn all the, you know, filling it, all these different things. That's the, we want the dealers out there doing it. Our job is to support them, to make sure there's a flow of guns when there's new things, to make sure uh, they're not being held up in one location or the other, that everybody is, is, is flourishing, that, that the small guy and the big guy are growing, that they're, uh, we're protecting their margins so they're earning money so that they're growing, because as they grow, we all grow. The whole air gun industry grows. So at its core, FX USA is distribution, distribution and support of your dealer network mm -hmm. and the buying public. Yeah. As far as maybe warranty, service yeah. after the sale. Yeah. These types of things. That's yep. basically what it is. Yeah, and then with a heavy amount of uh, marketing and messaging to help get the word out as far as what FX. You does. do get around. I didn't even know I was going to see you in Sweden. It was a surprise when I saw. <laughs> when I bumped into him yesterday. No, and it's as I told you before. Like we have a really quick development phase here, but it means that we have to do a lot of things very thoroughly the, the first time. So it takes a lot of effort and energy mm -hmm. in Sweden when we do all of that. And we want to make certain that someone can carry on the stick when we're uh, finished with the gun and starting producing. Even though the gun is great, we need someone to let the public know, and that's what we needed in the American, American, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Because it's a constant cycle. You, you, you know, the power plenum was this month. Okay, what's next month? Okay, let's let's mm -hmm. get the information. Make sure that trickles out to everyone who's needed. Um, uh, yeah, we. We don't want something created that people don't fully utilize and understand what it can do. We gotta, we gotta. That's the essence of marketing: is convey what something is as as simply as possible. What I've always thought was interesting about FX USA is like the flock you talk about. You know, Matt, Ted. You know, and just everyone just kind of marching forward. But a lot of ideas coming out of are coming out of FX USA. It's an ideas epicenter for enhancing the product. A lot of Ernest. Yeah, Ernest has lots of ideas um, on top of just, uh, you know, the, we try to stay connected with the dealers. The dealers are on the front lines because we know we're farther removed. And then Frederick and Johan, if, that's when they say they know air guns partly because they're talking all the way down the different chains. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not designing in a room, right? Uh, Frederick and Johan design something and they, the instincts are there, and, but then it's going out to these, you know, the, the, the different shooters and the dealers and confirming and making sure that nothing's missed. Right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're not designing in a box, so you know they avoid the mistakes. You have a team of how many now? Thirteen. Team of thirteen in Wilmington, North Carolina. Yeah. Opened when? Uh, <laughs> three months after Frederick talked to me. <laughs> that was the, <laughs> the craziest thing. Was you know I, I had to leave um, Air Gun Depot for personal reasons. To, I had to move out of Utah. Frederick found out. Um, everything sounded fantastic, uh, and then it was oh by the way. Uh, Three months from now, we need to be open. <laughs> <laughs> and then I don't know where the last two and a half years have gone. <laughs> but yeah, uh, um, November 2017. Yeah, and a lot of I mean, uh, the U.S. market is very passionate about air guns, 
and that passion and, and very vocal. I mean, you have forums, you have calls, you have emails, people want answers and, and we want to feed that because again, the, the people that are passionate about our sport is how the sport grows and that's good for everyone in the industry, not just us, but obviously that's, you know, driving that forward. We love that passion because Aragons is such a small thing and, and every day there's, there's a new you know, a powder burner that pulls the trigger for the first time and mm -hmm. says this, this is the most amazing thing possible. I, I had no idea. There's so many of them. I, you yeah. know, out of 100 powder burners, maybe one or two know. Mm -hmm. They don't know what they don't know. And that's that's the, uh, that's the a lot of my personal drive. I mean, I, I had no idea what an air gun was six years ago. Um, I was a business person. Um, but pulling the trigger the first time on the PCP, I knew that, I hate that PCPs are grouped in with CO2 guns and, and sure. rails. It's a separate thing. It absolutely is. And in my eyes, wide, opened wide. Um, and, and then very quickly, you know, I was at Aragon Depot at the time and they didn't sell FX and everything because I was hungry because the passion was there. Mm -hmm. I wanted to learn everything I could about it and then I wanted to shoot the best. This is right when the impact was released and I'm like, shit, why, why don't we sell that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that kept me up at night and that, you know, All right, Yuan had to excuse himself to take care of some business, but Frederick, Smooth Twist, mm -hmm. the original, mm -hmm. and now Smooth Twist X. Why, what made you want to come up with your own unique barrel? Wow, um, <laughs> I want to make everything myself. And um, if we go back in time, every now and then the whole industry had accuracy for and uh, everyone was buying the barrel from the same place. Uh, and uh, what I did was uh, spend a lot of time hand polishing them inside and things like that. It was a dreadful job. But you don't want to deliver for accuracy either. But you come to a certain point, you couldn't get all the way to the accuracy you want really, but it was okay. Uh, and that happened two times to me. It happened for the whole industry. Everyone, every now and then, get. I think there was something wrong with the raw material or something. Mm. I heard it was the rumors we, we heard from from the maker. Uh, so I was fed up. I was really, really fed up. I uh, decided there and then I'm going to make my own barrels. So I started that project and uh, I was working on it for two years, and then I invited uh, Ben Taylor because I, I got some really good accuracy, very good results, but sometimes I get really bad. Mm. And it was really hard. And Ben looked at the problem, and he came up with a super idea of to fix it. And um, so we did. Um, we did it differently, so we come up with a smooth twist. Um, it was very similar to what I was working on, but I don't want to reveal how for well, sure, <laughs> secret uh, I don't but, know, there is a couple of secrets in there, but he came up with a brilliant idea. So good idea, so I give him actually all the credit for it, because um, I was struggling. I was, I've been struggling for three, three and a half months like crazy. I couldn't get anywhere. I could get some good and, and some bad, and I couldn't have it that way. Mm -hmm. So band solution cure everything. The, the original smooth twist, if you know, if you guys don't know, it's a smooth bore. Yeah. There's no rifling barrel, and then at the at the end, at the muzzle end, yeah. There's like a a, a, a choked kind yeah, of yeah, but it, it's pressed from the outside. That's what's making it so unique. But it's just the last inch and a half, maybe. Inch and a half, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. But the original smooth twist. Was that the idea from the beginning? Yeah. Smooth? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. The, okay. the only thing you want. <laughs> It's spinning the pellet. But why is it better? Why was your initial thought to have the smooth most of the way? What does that do? Um, the idea, the very early idea was, if I if I have a barrel that long, then it's actually ten barrels. I cut it up. Oh, it's to to be more efficient with your money. Yeah. Not only that, this was like many times. A bad barrel it could ruin. It could be bad anywhere in the barrel. Three right? inches in, five inches in. So, yeah. so it's the ruin. The accuracy could be that part of the barrel. If I could cut that off and just using the good oh, part. Okay. 
And if you have a bear that long, you can actually treat it and polishing it, you can do things with it. Uh -huh. And um, but I don't want to say too much there yeah. because I don't want to give other one ideas here. But there was no uh, other reasons to have a smooth bore for most of the way. That was what it. is this in the end? It's spinning the pelvis, okay? okay. Uh, the twist rate from a smooth twist barrel was like a 1 in 50, 1 in 60 sometimes. Mm -hmm. But you don't need more of that. People didn't understand that. I knew it. I knew that straight away uh, because of all the testing I've done. So I knew we don't need much uh, twist rate. Uh, but the X, the reason why I did the X, I did the X. The X was came later. Later, yeah. yeah. Just a few years ago. Three, yeah. Three and a half. And uh, I could control that better. I can control the twist better. Mm -hmm. um, more refined, more delicate. Um, it is fantastic. It's, it's just fantastic. Mm, okay. Yeah. What? So, what's sorry, go ahead. Uh, what's the difference between? Um, a slug liner and a pellet liner. How? Because they're different, right? Yeah. Can you talk a little? A, a pellet doesn't need so much spinning. Okay. A slug. It drag stabilizes yeah. the shape. So slug spin, spins very different. Yeah, the yeah. twist is different. A slug need more spin. That's for sure. Okay. And uh, and actually, what we're finding is that pellet liner is more forgiving. A slug is not so much forgiving. And I think one of the problems is you have a lot of pellets out there in different dimensions. Mm -hmm. You have 50, 51, 52, sometimes even head 53 and 54. Mm -hmm. Yeah, head size. Uh, slugs, they are one dimension or maybe, maybe, maybe two sometimes. So, okay. Um, and I hope in the future the slug can have more variation uh, in dimension. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they are trickier, a little bit trickier, yeah. Okay. But the idea, just to go backwards a little bit, to the, the smooth twist X, that's not a smooth, an original smooth twist just drawn out further down the barrel. It's no, something it's totally different? Different. It's totally different. And yeah. the thinking behind it was... Well, it's still, it's still that idea of the um, rifling press from the outside in. Uh -huh. So you get the glass, uh, the surface that's uh, without imperfections. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at... Our barrels, it's like nature in itself has made them. That's yeah, when you that, look in there, it is. It looks yeah, but we don't need any tools inside ever, whatsoever. No so the starting end is, is so cleverly made. So we, we, we don't have any lead letting up there yeah. or any. It's like everything is like super polished. Mm -hmm. um, and, but yeah, there's so many. And the consistency is there. I mean, yeah, it, it, with fantastic. I, I think with a lot of other barrel makers, you order Sometimes. you order a hundred barrels. There's a certain amount that'll maybe be amazing. Certain certain amount there. Eh, yeah. Some that are, no, we don't have that. It's like everything is consistent. Uh, yeah. Many times when people are accuracy problems, actually wrong tune gun. Yeah, we yeah. were talking when you were at the airport getting mad. Yeah. We were talking or train station getting mad. We were talking about how, you know, Matt, Ted. You know, the, your content creators and your, you know, your FX team, when you go to your shooting events, they don't have special barrels. No. Or special, pro they, it's the same that... It's production guns. Yeah, yeah, we ship things over and, and we're using yeah. them, so... And that's yeah. the confidence we have And, in the and if I knew how to do a special, everyone should be special. So... Great message. So, uh, yeah, we love accuracy. And, uh, and controlling your barrel making, you know, it's amazing. It's fantastic, and and our barrels are so different to all the others out there. The liner system, everything is so different. Mm -hmm. uh, that could be scaring for a lot of people. Uh, I remember when we come up with the smooth twist barrel, and there was ninety percent of the people out there say it was claiming it's not working, and um, but they had wrong. But yeah. you know, when so many people, they can't get their mind around it. And they, they discount it. Yeah, so mm -hmm. with a lot of hate to that smooth tweet. A lot. Well, that and it's still around. It's still around. A lot of those people uh, are still angry for some reason. I don't know why, but they are still a little bit angry. Mm -hmm. um, and now we, with the X barrel, is, um, it's just amazing. I'm so happy. But at this time, you're no longer, at this time, you're not producing the original smooth twist. All the guns that come off the line come with the, yeah. the, the X, the X barrels yeah. now. Is there going to be 
an XX barrel? Is there thinking to the future? <laughs> no, or are you happy with where you're no, at? No, we've, we've working all the time. Okay. We, we but have, the X system means any liner can be we, placed in there. We, we talked about yeah, it earlier. We have the, new ideas. I'm but sure. But the good thing is for the end user, <laughs> yeah. it's probably just going to cost them another $100 to Switch upgrade the, the gun. Yeah. They don't have to buy a new gun. Right, right. Just the real we, we, are, we have cool stuff, yeah. What's so special about the FX Pocket Crony? Where did the idea and base technology come from? Yeah, the chronograph is um, made by a friend of mine. Uh huh. And uh, he contacted me and he actually developed it for paintball. And he asked me, hey, listen, uh, I know you are into the arrogant thing. Do you think there is a future for my chronograph? And I told him, yeah, I think so. Uh, send me a sample. So he sent me a sample and the maximum speed of that sample was like 450 feet. Small radar and everything. So I told him, make me a version which is capable of over 1000 feet per second. So he did. And um, bigger radar and things like that. And, um, and it was nice, super nice. Uh, and it was an app on the mobile and everything and uh, and I was trying to figure out how to create it better you, you know with just basic in there mm -hmm. and then I involved uh, Giles mm -hmm. and Giles have a lot of ideas you know oh yeah and um, so he basically he he took over all the the, the app thing uh, in a fantastic way it was like Whatever I was thinking of, it was there. So it was a process. So it's a the app is still being worked on today. Like uh, it's yeah, a new it's update, update coming yeah. this week. Yeah, I've gotten several over the last couple of months. Yeah, but this week there's gonna be a big one. Okay. Yeah. 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 And there's another big one planned after that as well. So it will be fun. And so we have selling a lot. <laughs> yeah. Crazy amount. And my gut feeling is we we took the. the the chronograph market is what it is. Yeah. But we probably took 80% of the market with that one. But it's fantastic. It is amazing. I, I just put it on my barrel and the phone is speaking to me, you know, girls uh, saying the uh, numbers. It's uh, just incredible. Super cool. It's super cool. Yeah. And it's, um, I think it's really needed with today's air guns because they're so tunable. So that with an air gun, you, uh, with a chronograph, you're able to do so much more than you were able to before. Mm -hmm. It's just so easy just to carry that around because you don't need to have any lighting or anything like that. Yeah. Have, you know, you mentioned Giles yeah. helping develop the product, and it kind of reminded me of a question I wanted to ask you. You guys have formed a lot of business partnerships along the way with several smaller companies from which you could have just as easily replicated yeah, we, the we, product. <clears throat> that's against our nature. We, we're not going to do that. We, If they put effort and uh, things like that into something that we don't want to steal it from them. Um, ex one example is uh, Fane and his dad. Sideshot. Yeah, Sideshot. Yeah. Come up with a fantastic magazine. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so um, at a certain point we, we said we want it. We paid for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I had I had side shot on here. Donnie Fell, Rat Sniper. Yeah. And yeah. I think of all these people, you, you partner with them, and yeah, no, that's what we want to do. Like we want to bring more people into the family. Yeah. Of, you know, seconds, and that's the way we do it. So we, we have Donnie that has his amazing silencers, but also now he has Saber Tactical, and uh, that he runs with uh, Fane and Val, and they are such dream team together, and they help. Uh, bring out more off-the-mark stuff for air guns, which are going to bring even more interest in our air guns. It's amazing for all of us. So yeah. it's really good getting those really good people together with you and mm -hmm. become a strong team. And, and again, this supports that theme of you guys just growing, growing that, yeah, that say, flock yeah, and just getting a little marching forward again. Yeah, proper lips. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. same there. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Are you ready for another one? Yeah. Why has it been such a focus to take the industry in the direction of the air gun slug? Fundamentally, how does their performance differ from the uh, Diablo shaped pellet? Are there any drawbacks? Do you have to start 
the one who we should blame is Matt Dober. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and Matt come to me. We we need to do slugs on air guns, and I told him, my experience is very bad with slugs. And I did some tests like 15 years ago, and they was no good. They were shooting all over the place. But he was very convinced. So I told him, listen, if you get over here, I promise you I'm going to make any liners you want, any number you give me, I'm going to support you, I'm going to help you, and uh, we, can, we can try. Because I, I heard the energy in, in Matt, he really want to do it. Mm -hmm. So I was making liners, and we testing that and that and that and that different kind of settings, twist rate, and and he getting better and better results. And in the end, it was like you couldn't deny it. It was like, wow. wow. So, so that was. But, but yeah. also at that time, I I could always make very powerful rifles, but we d decided not doing that because if you have a pellet rifle and a lot of power, people are just going to abuse it. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to put a highest power, call you, say, there is no accuracy in this rifle. When there isn't at the height. No, we, we but, know that. Yeah. But an end user, nothing that's there. You have to help that, them out so. by restricting it. It's so, nice for them to hear it from you guys. You tune all your guns here that shoot pellets. Yeah. Not to a thousand feet per second. No, 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 no. no, no. To what? Yeah. No, we, like we 900 feet per second is a standard. Sweet like. spot. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we, we tune it perfect. But a lot of people change it straight away. Yeah, right. Crank um, it up. And, um, and then they complain, of course. Because Can you imagine trying to do that project with Matt, though, without the smooth twist X barrel system, or the liner system? No. Uh, you wouldn't have done it. No. It would have been too much of a hassle. Yeah. That'd but have the been liners, good. no problem. So, uh, and, and the flexibility, because so you don't have to sell it. When we saw that was working, then we decided we, we need more power in our guns, because flags could be the future also, mm -hmm. and also pellets. I mean, I like them both. Uh, very interesting, and the hybrid's even more interesting because mm -hmm. um, things I don't want to tell on camera right now, but there is something really interesting uh, which we have a huge benefit of uh, because we're making you know the liner system, mm -hmm. and there is uh, I don't want to say too much, but it's very very interesting. Okay. Um, yeah. So match the reason. Yeah, match the reason. He's the one to blame. Okay. Uh, but we adapt now. We have far more power in, in every model. Mm -hmm. uh, we working, still working on liners and trying to improve things. We that and no ending kind of work. Mm -hmm. um, and we have more ideas we're going to try out, uh, of course. Uh, but I think it's a nice combo way: is pellets and slugs. Um, and I don't know. We, it's up to you, really. Some hunters or whatever want to shoot a long range. Uh, Matt Dauber, in his case, they are only allowed to shoot 2 2 in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So the shark thing makes sense uh, because he didn't have other calibers. To, you know, in America, you can go 25 30. But right. Um, but I think it's interesting, though. It, yeah. It is. The message I've been sharing with these guys on my channel is that they're, the pellet and the slug are both important tools. It's just another. It's just another arrow in your quiver. If you're concerned with backdrop, you know, you use a pellet. But now we're reaching out to how many yards effectively with air gun slugs? Oh, it <coughs> shots 200 plus. Yeah, yeah 200 yeah. plus. If you need the range, the distance, the downrange power, you know, you, it, just, it just takes something like an air gun and it makes it that much more versatile of yeah. a tool that we've kind of entered this, you know, this slug thing. Yeah. Yeah. How did you choose Rat Sniper? to be your manufacturer. I hear the most interesting slug on the market, or market, it's not the market, but uh, the hybrid was so interesting. Because a uh, slug is very heavy, normally. But he made them light. Hollow. Yeah. yeah. Extremely hollow. Yeah. yeah. Not and, just punching. And, yeah, yeah. And they have the right BC and everything. They are perfect for air guns. Mm -hmm. They are not easy to make, though. I understand that. It's tricky to make and expensive to make. But if someone's starting this process, it's over time, it's going to be cheaper and better. So for the future air gunning, I think the hybrid is crucial. I could actually put air guns on the, on the map. You know, if you take the American uh, firearms industry yeah. or market, it's at the whole table. 
and the arrogance is a little bit docked here. Yeah, a splinter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the reality. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but with that kind of technology and what we are all doing now, blah, 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 if we get it like that, yeah. Mm. Holy Life is Lord. good. Yeah. There's a 2-2 there's a slug now. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Any plans? You want to talk about any plans? Yeah, to the two five. About that? The two five is finished now. By the time people are seeing this, it should be out. Yeah. Uh, Thirty, thirty-five uh, different weights uh, within uh, all the calibers. Uh, just a matter of gr growing it. Uh, like Frederick said, you know, when we met Michael, he was making everything hand swaged. So there's a there's a big difference between hand swaging something and then uh, you know getting machinery and automating it. Mm -hmm. There's uh, a, a lot of learning curve and figuring that out and. Uh, I think we've cracked that, and now it's a matter of production, and then looking at how to expand to make it more available worldwide. Um, it, you don't want to ship lead <laughs> necessarily, so there's a lot of uh, unique challenges. So. Mm -hmm. well, so it sounds like you you approach it as a partnership. How can we help you develop your brand and take it? What do you need from us to take it to the next level? You mentioned the machines and yeah, it's, it's a good collaboration. Yeah, okay. It's a lot of infrastructure as well that needs to be in place yeah. in order to take something to make it grow, mm -hmm. uh, which we are able to with FXUSA now, which is established in the USA and has a good deal network, yeah. are able to supply. Um, that's what's what's needed for the product. Yeah, instead of just making another, there's a lot of cottage industries in mm -hmm. air guns, which is fantastic, but at some point it has to get to that next level of distribution to help something to grow and, and get the uh, numbers to make it all work. Okay, but you foresee all the different calibers coming. Yeah. What's yeah. what's coming next? 25. Okay. And when? then uh, that's... It's going to be released when this video goes it, out. It, yeah. yeah. So soon. It, coming the slugs weeks. are done. It's just waiting for a little bit of packaging. And yeah. Awesome. What makes the impact so special in the industry? Well, it's a, a highly tunable gun. So you're able to adjust the hammer spring tension, you're able to adjust the regulator pressure, you're able to adjust the valve length, you're able to adjust the calibers. All externally. To, yeah, all externally. And you're able to adjust the barrel lengths to it. And you're able to do so much things. So you're able to take it from a compact 2.2 to a sniper version of a 7.62 in, within minutes. You'd be able to shoot like go out hunting like in a bush with a, with a compact gun, and then two like five minutes later you shoot competition with a seven mm barrel, and it's good enough to win the competitions. Yeah, and the liner system, you know that is everything is so crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, about it's fantastic. If you, if you really have air guns as your hobby and passion, mm -hmm. an impact is amazing. So is it for everybody? I don't know. Well, it is what you make it to. Like, it is a gun that you can take out of the box and use. Yeah, use it. Yeah. Uh, we do have the customer service behind the product to be able to, if you have run into any problems, we're able to sort it out for you. Mm -hmm. So if you're just going to take it out of the box and just use it, no problem whatsoever. The problem is people that then are going to tune it to such things. And if you don't have a chronograph and they don't know what measurement started at, and if you're not able to uh, test it properly, then they might be in trouble, but we're there to help those guys out as well. It's a quicker so learning curve than I think people realize. That, um, it's you know intimidating at first, <coughs> but then you quickly learn, and it's not that yeah, difficult. There's a lot of information on YouTube. Yeah. How to do that and that and that. Yes, so. there is. <laughs> but that little bit of learning provides something that's so flexible, and you know the fact that a gun that's manufactured that can be very low power, compact, and very high power, and there's nothing different between those guns. It's very, it's incredible. A lot of people don't realize how much effort is put into like the power plenum that was added this year. How much internal changes were done so that could still be low power and high power. To have that flexibility, you know, you talk about pellets and slugs. Mm -hmm. we, we don't want dedicated guns one way or the other. You want to have that flexibility, the hybrid of it can be anything and everything. Uh, so the user can really tailor to what they want and that gun can grow with them. Uh, you know, the, you yeah. know, Frederick was talking about the liner system. A new projectile comes out, we can have a liner that matches it perfectly, you know, the, the innovation, the changes. You're talking about chokes and barrels. And yeah, yeah, and the liner, I think, is <coughs> probably over $100. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So instead of having to buy a whole new gun, right. you just yeah. buy that liner specific to whatever caliber. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people earlier this year, when the hybrid came out in 2.2, um, a lot of people are shooting 2.5 and 30, but also in 2.2 and showing what Matt, Matt was doing. With the two two, the small projectile slugs, mm -hmm. a lot of people got really interested in that, and and 
great. They just bought a barrel kit, and they didn't have to buy a whole new gun. They just adjusted it. And that, that flexibility is its a fantastic value for the end user. Flexibility. You, um, before we kind of move on to flexibility, what um, if they don't know the, the power, the new power plenum yeah. that's available as an upgrade for yeah. the impact through the dealer network, the dealer right? Network. They can't do it on their own. Depending on where they're at and their okay. level of expertise, there are some videos out there. Okay. We're, we're just trying to make sure people are comfortable being careful. I can't careful. do something funny, though. Uh, it's funny, it's funny. Uh, people want to have it so they can do it themselves. But instantly, when I've seen people have done it themselves, they, they, the first thing they say, I don't get the power up. What's wrong? What's wrong is um, because you have so much plenum, you don't need that high rake pressure. So what they are doing, actually, they go up to 140. Automatically. Yeah. yeah. And then the hammer and the can't cope with that pressure. Because of the extra volume. Yeah. 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 So you, if you go to 125, you're going to have plenty of power. Ah. But they think, oh, shit, it's useless. But they're going to high. They should start very low and gradually go up. And the, and the regulator and the hammer are just going to have to go together. Uh -huh. You can't just, if I just go with the regulator up, then the hammer can't open it can't the move because it's under so much pressure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if you do the opposite, go with the hammer, then it's open the, the, the valve so fast and closing it so fast. So, so the There's speed no actually going down habit. because of that. Uh -huh. So, um, but it's, it's quite easy because choose a rake pressure, you know, will work 110, 115 bar. And then you just click, 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 uh, adjust the, the power register on the side uh -huh. and go up. And you see the speed go up. And if, if it's not going up any higher, then you can go up a little bit more on the, on on the rig. Uh -huh. And then you, uh, it's quite easy. And there is a lot of information. Yes, there is. But that's really good as a, as a base guide yeah. for somebody that has the and change I, and they're not seeing no, they, what they, they want. But it, but it, you know, just to summarize very quickly. Yeah. The and and one thing more, yeah. one thing more. Yes. Which is so interesting. Uh, uh, in the past, a, uh, an impact, thirty caliber, you got forty shots. We were saying forty shots, but actually you got 42, 43, 44 sometimes. Mm -hmm. At eight sixty five, eight seventy. And now. A little bit smaller or a little bit bigger bottle, 580, mm -hmm. you get 100 shots. It, with the plenum? Yeah, with the plenum. 100 shots. Hmm. And the plenum is more than just the plenum. With the, with the changes, of the, there's some internal volume changes to the receiver, right? Uh, yeah, there's made made spaces into it. It, it was it was made earlier than the big plenum mm -hmm. or power plenum, but okay. however, it is on the power plenum as well. And you will like if you have an older gun, you'll really notice the difference because this allows you to go down even lower on rig pressure, mm -hmm. which will give you more shot count basically because yeah. you're able to use the bottle a lot longer. Okay, you answered the question. I was just trying to get for them. The plenum does what for for my gun? Lower, lower rig pressure and give a gun with even better harmony. Yeah. The harmony from the mini is fantastic, but even better. Okay. So it ena overall enhances shot count, harmony, power. Yeah, because yeah, you, yeah. you don't have to open up a 140 bar valve anymore. It's yeah. only like 105 yeah. bars. Yeah, so not, everything's not working against each other internally. No, There's no just tension. much more, more flow. The Dreamline, it's a real departure from how the industry has always invented and implemented air guns. Where did the Lego inspiration come from? What's the basic concept? Talk to us about the new Dreamline, Power Plenum and Arrow Kit. Dreamline. The, the, the original idea of the, that Lego gun was you one. He hated it. He said it was the worst day I've ever heard. <laughs> no, but you have to understand. It, but I, you loved each other at the end no, of the day. The, the, yeah, it could be a different gun, but it didn't have those features I like. Uh, so then it didn't make sense. But when we add those features, so you can tune the blah, 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 everything uh, up and down, do whatever, change the caliber, then it was making sense. So the original idea, 
I didn't like because it was too simple gown. Uh, and that's not FX really. Yeah, you can change things, but but now as the Dreamline is right now, it's a fantastic gun. It's just amazing. Working in that just the hammer, the external regulator, yeah, all these things. And, that, yeah. Home. And we also have as you sold us the power plant, power plant as well for the Dreamline now. Yeah. Which is also made available for off market use. So if you have a Dreamline already, you can install it, uh, no problem whatsoever. In a minute. Uh, and this will allow you to go lower in rig pressure as well. Uh, it will also make it hard to open the, um, the valve pin, but it will allow you to go lower in rig pressure and give you more shot count, no problem whatsoever. And uh, you'll be able to get more power out of it uh, as well. That's one of the most common questions they ask me is, because <clears throat> they watch the impact videos, they watch the crown videos, but they like the price point of the Dreamline. Mm, right. So they say, if I invest in a Dreamline, can I get the power to where an impact or a crown is? That's what they ask me. What do you you'll, say to that? You'll be able to get more power than a crown, but less than an impact. Yeah, it really closed yeah. the gap with the Dreamline we, power plan. We have a Dreamline, a, a bolt pop, a new version. Mm -hmm. um, I was testing that the other day, and I got over 1,000 feet in 30 caliber. You know, well, Strong. I, yeah. So, um, yeah, and that's over a hundred foot pounds. A thousand foot per second in a thirty cal is. It's over a hundred foot. Over hundred yeah. foot pounds. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, a, a, it's a platform where it's so easy to do these innovations and, and, and grow it and configure it. Yeah, you still have the foundation that's completely the same. As well, who can who can talk to that? I'll show them. I'll impose mm -hmm. the video you had at Ewa last year so that they can see this while you're describing. But the Dreamline, what is it? What's the concept? It's. Uh, <laughs> can I can. Uh, can we quit there? So uh, stop. So I can get two guns, holding in my hand. Yeah. All right. If you want. Yeah. I, go. I, I'm thinking about taking. Papa, do you want to go? Oh, maybe I talk to one minute. I think I'm thinking about launching that. Yeah, Dreamline dream is. Um, oh yeah. A very, a changeable. Gun. Okay. Uh, it can be almost anything. Um, this is a bolt pop. And it's a, it's a new one. Uh, we haven't put it on the market yet. Um, have super big planum, uh, capable of over 1,000 feet per second in 30 caliber. It's crazy. It's a cannon. Yeah. And you can have, this is a 300cc uh, bottle. Mm -hmm. You can have a 400, 500. Super light gun. What will the price point be? Ooh, good question. Similar to the other Dreamlines? It, in the same same price as the existing Dreamline bottle. It's just not upgrade of it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. What's that? No, it's just uh, it can be anything. Uh, we have so I think we have twelve different Dreamline now. Twelve or thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. So they can put a, have a traditional looking yeah, stock that too, on there that if they too. want, or classic looking. Absolutely. Stock. Yeah. This is tactical. This is bolt pop. We have they're all built field target. A field target, field target yeah, one now. Yeah. They're all built around that same action. Mm -hmm. And then the others are so easy to switch out. So it's it's not complicated to turn this into something else. Right. And you can have an air tube instead of a bottle. So it yeah. looks like a yeah. traditional yeah. firearm yeah. and not a paintball gun. Yeah, this and one, the cylinder is a whole other power tandem there. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. And the bottle adapter, these, mm -hmm. you know, these are all different parts you can add if you had a cylinder version mm -hmm. with a 300 uh, cc carbon fiber. Yeah, it's the, the newer version of the compact. Externally adjustable regulator? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. If we turn it around. Oh, this right one. And then, then, then this side here is all those adjustments you guys are talking about. On this one? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, the hammer, the hammer adjuster that everyone loves, valve. Yeah. Regulator. Swap barrels. Yep. Yeah, they have everything. Mm -hmm. When is this all coming? Uh, this one is already in production. Okay. Yeah. So soon. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All of it is within the next month. Okay. Yeah, and the compact is out. It's just the new options. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Well, now that you got all your dream lines out, can I talk about the crown? Um, the Crown switched to doing super light barrels and uh, yeah. yeah, the Continuum was the idea of short barrel and a long barrel. Continuum meaning both ends of the spectrum. So mm -hmm. you have a very, the compact barrel that a lot of people like and then if you're shooting off a bench, uh, because the super light barrels, meaning 
the yeah. way the barrels are made, it's you could have a 700 millimeter barrel uh, and still be rich enough for all the accuracy gains that the impact is getting. So it's just a lot more versatility. And the way we make the barrels, they are, as the name implies, super light, so they don't weigh it too much. So even though if we had a long, long barrel on it that is 700 mil long on a mm -hmm. traditional rifle such as the Crown, you don't gain any weight up front, so you're still very stable when you hold it, hold it, handle it. Yep. So why would why would one want a longer barrel versus a shorter barrel? What do you gain? Uh, you're able to use utilize more of the valves. You're able to have the valve open for a longer time and have the, the pallet or slug use the full trajectory of the um, of the barrel, yeah. the full length of it. Longer runway. To, yeah, exactly. Okay. So to same amount of air, more power. more power. Yeah. Got it. Shorter barrel. Shorter ease barrel. Of use. Is yeah, it's easy to carry Very around, compact. but you need higher brake pressure yeah. for a shorter barrel in order to get that amount of speed in that short length. Okay. Okay, so but the application and then that flexibility because the price is only $100 more in the US market, and you get both those barrels and that flexibility. They're both the um, interchangeable liners, so you can do different uh, projectiles. So, okay, so if you, sa if you want to save the 100 bucks, you buy the crown. Yep. If you want the versatility with the extra barrel. In, in all the crowns, you can buy the continue. barrel kits uh, yeah, as well. I have to leave now. I'm going to pick up Matt Dober. So, um, thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Frederick. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you in an hour. Uh, yeah. Take about an hour, I guess. Yeah. I'll take your spot. All right. Okay. That answered the question yeah. for me on, on the crown. I was a little bit confused. Yep. Um, does FX, you know, from what I've seen downstairs, I, I saw him even tuning arrow guns. This morning. Yeah. So does FX test and tune every single gun that they make, or is it just like a batch testing type thing? Uh, no. Uh, every single gun that is built in Sweden here is tested. Uh, it is put through a chronograph. Uh, it is also looked at for accuracy at 50 yards. And it's also functionally tested with safety and everything like that. So every single gun is. Tested. So but you are tuning them? Yeah, of okay. course. And then they come to you guys. Yep. Do you change them for the U.S. market at, we at really all? We just air them up because um, people want them so quickly. We don't send anything by boat. So it comes uh, via air without um, wow. air in the cylinder. So we have to air them up and make sure that no overings get loose. Mm. Um, and, and then really it's getting out to the dealers. Now, you know, the, the great thing about like an impact or any of the guns, but uh, a dealer especially a lot of these the more modern dealers, they, they know that they can carry a set amount of impacts or crowns, but then also have a lot of barrel kits so they can really tailor to what the, the customer wants. Mm -hmm. the, what there's, you know, they can ask the questions of where are you going to shoot it, what kind of caliber, what kind of projectile, and, 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 and these dealers are getting very savvy so they know how to adjust the guns so they can, it, it comes factory tuned for certain pellets and, and, and uh, barrel lengths, but then based on what the, the customer wants. These dealers are very savvy. So, so the dealers may, might be setting them up for their local markets. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> and a lot of dealers now in the U.S., for example, we have big, big ones that they go out of the way. So if a customer wants to, yeah, says, I want to shoot that pallet now, the 34 grain 25 mm -hmm. instead of shooting 25 grain, then they are able to tune it up for them, set it to the perfect, and you send it out so that it's able to use it right out of the box. So you're at your just bringing that whole level of service. Yeah. Up, yeah. Get Cause, the gun. Because really, in the factory, you you, you've quality controlled the barrels, made sure the barrels are extremely accurate. Yeah. It, you know, changing for different projectiles is just a matter of getting the rag and hammer set mm -hmm. properly. Yeah. Uh, and the guns are very easy to work with, and these uh, these dealers are are getting it down. Uh, you know, some dealers will just sell them as is, you know, factory settings, but others will try to cater a little bit. Yeah. So, but if but if you do want to purchase from your favorite dealer, who sells it as they come from you and you? No problem. Yeah. No oh, problem. yeah. Yeah. No. Cool. Cool. On the arrow guns, why do they exist? <laughs> What's the backstory? <clears throat> I saw a woman t testing an arrow pistol this morning yeah. down on the range. Uh, no, I, the reason they exist is um, my father was working on a rescue gun a while back, and it used the same um, recipe. It has the barrel, a thin barrel sleeve. That you push the um, the over the barrel yeah. arrow. When you say a rescue gun, yeah, it was uh, like a grappling gun. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, probably grappling. It's, it's something you did for fun. Okay. And 
he he made a gun that was basically a a, a, a bow with the same shape of a bow and you pulled it and it shot. But after a while, we found out that we could just put it on any of our regular guns, just remove the barrel and put that in. Yeah. And uh, so, <coughs> at that point, I know <laughs> what I love is that Frederick was saying at that point it was working. It was uh, I think he showed it at Iwa Yun one year just yeah because you could and it was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd rather. <laughs> yeah. I was kind of new and different. I mean, you know, how many people shoot arrows to pellets and slugs is, but no comparison. But what what I love about the all the modern FX guns, you can buy a simple barrel kit and shoot arrows. You don't have to have a dedicated gun, and it is fun. I, yeah. It's a so so what started out as, look what I can do. Yeah. Turned into something that people are actually buying and. Yeah, we have a lot of people now that actually buy the FX guns and then buy an arrow barrel kit too. Tune it down to low power because a lot of people use the arrows with really high power, but they get really loud. But they tune them down a little bit mm -hmm. and they shoot with the, in the garden with with friends because it's so much more visible. Like the pellets, you oh, yeah. shoot and you can't mm -hmm. see what you hit or not. Mm -hmm. But with the arrows, you truly see if you hit or not. Mm -hmm. So they tune it down a little bit and they shoot in the garden. It doesn't go very loud and it's just so visible. And it's so enjoyable when you're with friends. It's like nothing shooting is like similar to it because you can do visible shooting with powder burners so yeah. you see things explode yeah yeah but the neighbors will not like it's that. just a good fun time yeah but this isn't a, this isn't a toy grade thing these can be these are more powerful than yes. modern yeah. crossbows than modern compound yeah. bows and you can hunt deer yeah. and yeah. elk and hog because anyone into archery knows that mu muzzle energy of a bow is very different than muzzle energy of a pellet because it's about that momentum and mass right. and the weight of the projectile. So, um, yeah, when you want to look at what you can hunt with it, you're going to compare muzzle energy in the crossbow world where it's mm -hmm. kinetic energy and range. So, yeah, like, it's a very serious device. And I hear you right that any of your guns can be had with an optional, or uh, any of the modern... Yes, uh, right now the only one that isn't uh, available for the general public is the impact, impact. but we're working on that. So I guess kind of on that note, what's with keeping in, in this, this is my perception, right? There's the whole world and then there's me, but what's with keeping the Verminator, Typhoon, Bobcat, Bo Boss, and Royale around? Like I took a picture of a Royale yeah. on Instagram yesterday in your facility and someone said, what's that? <laughs> but there was, but the, you know, you had like 15 of them there that you had just built that. Yeah, day. Someone's so, buying them. Yeah, the, the world is big and in some countries, Air gun, you a lot of governments use air guns, and they like the older style. They don't need much as much adjustability. They, they use it for pest control and such things. And then the Royal is a great gun. You have the power just on the side. And that's all that you need. It's just the Royal is a gun. solid gun. It yeah. just gets overshadowed by all the crazy things. You know, now that we have the crown and yeah, yeah. And okay, so you're still gonna make them, and as long as they keep buying them, we still have parts enough to make the first FX2000 in stock. We can make well over 60, 70 pieces of that for out of inventory today. If we want to see. That's the one Frederick was talking about. Yeah, that's the first back in 20 like year the, old yeah, gun. early yeah. 2000s or whatever. Yeah. That's the first gun we made, and we still have posh for that. We still have posh for all the guns that we made. And, and yeah, that's why it's, it, we uh, make sure we have all the parts for the aftermarket service. I mm -hmm. mean, I think in the last month at FX USA, we've worked on three tarantulas and a, um, uh, an exterminator, you know, mm -hmm. a gun that I'd never seen before. but. <laughs> If, if we can help them. If something breaks, we can take care of them. Awesome. This is going to be a fun one. Help us understand the price gap between the traditional powder burning firearms and high performance air guns. Why are air guns generally more expensive? There are so I get that question all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, a, there's so many parts in an air gun. It's just so, it's just so hard to compare it. It's just two totally different animals. I would say the general perception of it is you point and you shoot, but there's so much things that goes into it. It's like it, you can compare one car to another car. Why are they like one car is ten thousand dollars and one is a million dollars? Why are they different? I would not say that the air guns are the one million dollar compared to the ten thousand dollars, but it's just there is so many things that are different, even though the end result is basically point A to point B. Yeah, the powder the the, the 
the traditional firearm, its power source and projectile are all encapsulated in the cartridge, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the gun itself is just providing the accuracy in the barrel. Yep. And then kind of ergonomics. Yeah, the ergonomics of how the to get that the cartridge pin, into it trigger. and yeah. hits the pin. So a lot of that accuracy is actually within that cartridge for the guys who really want crazy accuracy. It's about the projectile, the powder loading, you know, different things like that. Um, where with the air guns, uh, <laughs> The only thing that's introduced is the projectile. The power plant is the air, which is much more complicated than mm -hmm. power. Um, obviously, they're both different tools that do similar results. So, with air, the that precise amount of air is achieved by, you know, regulators, tubing, valving, uh, how quickly it opens. That what we were talking about earlier, the combination of the pressure and the hammer opening the valve. The, the harmony. Valve. Frederick, I think you use yeah. the word harmony. Yeah. That's so key to accuracy. I don't. I think a lot of people don't really. Yeah, they, like they think it has to do with the barrel band. The difference between uh, <laughs> one and a half one and a half inch group and a half inch group of fifty can be just a nudge on the hammer spring tension. Like just is, finding that sweet spot yeah, where the gun yeah. wants to. Like an overtuned air gun is ten times worse than a just an under like slightly undertuned air gun, and mm -hmm. people always go for the power tuning. And yeah. it so often happens that if you tune it a little bit too hot, and that means that they're slamming the hammer, they're slamming the valve, and they're hitting the ball on the breech block, and all of a sudden you have so much different movements that are so hard to get consistent. Before like, the pellet actually comes out, there's so much yeah, going on like, inside the yeah, gun. Yeah, exactly. But not only that, like when you're hitting the valve, you have a certain amount of rig, you have pressure, and you hit the valve, it moves smoothly. But if you all of a sudden hit that wall, wall. It just you lose the fine what fine adjustment of the valve and everything, so you lose so much. Yeah, I will. I will say an, another interesting thing because I was hanging out with a very uh, high profile 22 long range shooter mm -hmm. uh, about two weeks ago, uh, who really knows the 22 precision market, and and it's what's interesting when you want the, the same accuracy of an FX in the 22 long range, those guns cost to you know 1500 okay. 2000 you're the same 000. stratosphere it's, mm -hmm. so it's interesting when you you know so a lot of times like oh you can pick up a 22 for a couple hundred bucks you can pick up a pcp for a couple hundred dollars right mm -hmm. yes, yep. so the comparisons have to be as far as the results mm -hmm. i think it's a more fair way to compare them okay yeah and a good thing with air guns in my opinion is it like buying a 200 dollar air gun and shooting it every day just the initial purchase of $200 compared to $2,000, mm -hmm. but when you're shooting it, it costs just the same amount, like it, it even costs less to shoot or air guns because we use less air and efficiency, because it's so much, it's so much more efficient, so shot per shot from a $200 gun and a $2,000 gun is the same cost. Yeah. So what you're basically doing is you... What kind of precision do you want? Yeah. Yeah, and I always enjoyed them because so many of us air gunners, you know, we're also powder burner guys and gals for years before we started playing with mm -hmm. air guns. and. I always enjoyed <clears throat> the really docile yeah. nature and that you could have moderators and match grade triggers and you can shoot all day and it's still fun. You don't feel beat, beat up. It's not loud. It you doesn't tire you out. Yeah, you have great controllability over backdrop and power and distance of the project. It's just, it's just endless. Yeah. <clears throat> and and endless fun. Obviously, in a lot of the world, air guns are their only options for shooting. But even in the U.S., I think about where I grew up in uh, northern Utah growing up. We could go shoot 22s. I mean, we could walk a half a mile and have open fields and shoot no problem. You can't do that anymore. Yeah. Um, the, the, the places to shoot rifles is shrinking, but air guns is wide open mm -hmm. for the most part. Especially if you have that controllability. Yeah. yeah. This is a great question for you, Yuan, because I know <clears throat> how hard you work at it. But service after the sale, how yeah. do you manage it? What, re what resources do your global customers have? What resources do we have here in the States? No, but as I told you previously in this conversation, basically we always really respect the customers that bought our guns, and we always want to make certain that they're happy with the purchase. So we, we do our best to be on point with all service provided service questions, such things, and more especially uh, just to make certain that they have a gun that we can be proud of. Um, we have questions from everything from this isn't working to. Can I do this? Can I do that? Can I do this? Can Just I do non-stop, that? I imagine. Yeah, a few, a few a questions. A few million there. a day. <laughs> no, uh, a few hundred a day. Inquiry. A few hundred a day. <laughs> um, but you just... I think it's really important because I, I, I do a lot of those myself. Because I really do enjoy uh, seeing what's, 
happening right now like do we have like it helps me see if we have a problem somewhere so it mm-hmm. it's helps me see if something's reoccurring like if, oh i see that usually this happens we might have to look into this area and see if we can improve it or um so it's oh, like you're keeping some, your pulse on yeah, what's going on yeah, that's in the world. I also speak with a lot of my dealers daily. I speak with a lot of my importers yeah, every hour basically. Mm-hmm. Just to keep track on everything and make certain everything's going as it is because it's so much easier. If I have my hand on the phones as you said, mm-hmm. if I find it out like two weeks early, it's so much easier because we produce so many guns every single day. Ah, fix it early. Yeah. Nip it in the bud early. So yeah, that's speak. what we want to do always. But it's more than just you, right? I mean, I, I feel like a lot of people here yeah. get involved in helping that. Yeah, in uh, that process of touching the customer. Yes, definitely. We are. We have three people here that uh, split the uh, emails. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's me, Oscar, and Andreas that does with the energy emails. Uh, but then we have a lot of people downstairs that know a lot. But um, first point of contact will be me, Oscar, or Andreas. Okay. And then in the States, I imagine you have a team? Yeah, we have uh, quite a few techs. And, and I'd, I'd say even trickling down to the dealers, more and more you have a, a whole community of people that are really there to For sure. to yeah. push. I mean, but the States, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. We have um, Ernest, who's doing more R&D, but then we have three other techs. And you would think, oh, well, how many guns do you have sent in? Actually, not a lot. Most of the time, those techs are on the phone, walking customers through it. If something goes down, we want to get the customer back up and shooting as quickly as possible. Mm-hmm. Especially with little things like, you know, they blew a, a, a breach O-ring. I mean, that, that's yeah. simple, get it in the mail, walk them through it, help them understand it's a simple, have the videos to show them. So it's, it's a lot of customer service to get them shooting as quickly as possible and answer questions, especially for air guns are growing, so you're getting so many new people into air guns. You know, we, sometimes we forget, we've been around air guns for years, we know things backwards and forwards, but the person who's two months into it, there's a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. And they're watching your videos, they're watching, you know, they're calling us, that, and, and we want to s- serve that person so they have a great experience. And like I said, we don't want the gun collecting dust, we want it being used. Yeah. So with you, the, the it sounds like the end user experience is phone and email. Yeah. And then here in Sweden, it's more email. Was, am I following that right? Yes, but, yes. Uh, we used to have an open phone line but it ended up being very disruptive to the day so now <laughs> now i can sit down i try to sit down every day but I, at least three days a week i sit down in the morning so i go through all the emails and make certain that we're up to date uh, and we have the advantage of the people calling are they english or spanish speaking i can imagine from a worldwide standpoint yeah that could be a little yeah call center could be so that's else. why you're here at four in the morning every day. yeah that's, <laughs> that's when i can get my free time that's i'm able to sh- go through a lot of emails before everyone else comes in. yeah and needs of you yeah awesome So um, this is this is kind of, to me, this is a neat question, and I've always wanted to ask you guys, especially for them, because there's so much. I'll call it I'll call it negative assumption, amongst the the community, but it's widely known that FX is aggressively supportive of YouTube content creators. Mm-hmm. Why? Because Ergon says to be been going through is just this piece of the. Uh, of the market right now, it's just such a small piece of the entire uh, gun, gun, community. gun community. And arrogance are so great. We have to educate people somehow. And YouTube is the biggest platform where you're able to reach out to everyone. Every single day, there's people that trying out arrogance for the first time and getting super excited. And that's thanks to reaching out to them. Um, I, I say I think arrogance deserves to be a much bigger part of the gun industry because. They are so good, and if they are so much fun to shoot, and it's just you have to get people into it. And um, the best way to reach people right now is you, through internet and YouTube. Okay, so it's really yeah. that simple. Yeah, and, and I'll say that um, it's. I think a lot of the misconceptions is that it's a. Uh, people kind of gravitate. Uh, the people that are wired very similar to us. We were talking about earlier, kind of the extended family. People yeah. pulling in the same direction. Yeah. I mean, Matt That's talks awesome. about the whole reason he started really collaborating with Frederick is that Frederick would listen to what he had to say and Frederick was very interested and there was this natural collaboration that's the same with a lot of shooters where a lot of these guys that are I mean these are these these are people that are shooting all the time and oftentimes they kind of as they in, in their experience of shooting multiple different things and there's there's no perfect air gun in general there's pros and cons I'm sure of multiple things but I think they gravitated towards FX 
it, it really aligned with what how they like to shoot is the people we're working with mm -hmm. um, and then you know we we the, the influence they have and what they can do for air guns as a whole not just FX mm -hmm. but the air gun community is very beneficial and we, we definitely you know we want Matt creating videos every week and Ted and Giles and all these different individuals mm -hmm. that's, that's beneficial for everyone and um, it's a good reciprocal relationship um, a, a lot of people get confused it's not exclusive relationship we're not telling these are independent contractors right they're their own people um, but it just happens to be that there's so much alignment that we work well together mm -hmm. uh, yeah okay I mean but my next question was Matt Ted Giles and others you know some some and it's it's, it's that negative assumption tendency I'll call it sure um, you know, some feel like you put pressure on that gang myself included um, to promote only FX and to avoid co covering other brands. I mean, you read about it on the forums. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I work directly with you, so I know that, you, you know, know my, my story, my experience is, you know, he sends me a gun. You know, I, you, f you find out I start on it, usually through Instagram or Facebook, <laughs> and you wait a day, and then, and then I'll get the call. Like he said, he's always touching his dealer network, his distributors. I'll get the call from you on, how's it going? Do you have any questions? There's never any... And, you know, Frederick's always telling me, I want you to just, if you hate it, tell everyone you hate it. It's fine. Just want you to be honest. You know, that's what I get from these guys. And I would imagine that's only the same, you know, yeah. for the rest of the, the rest of the gang. It, we right. honestly don't have time for more than that. You know, it, it's a little bit of, we, we put a lot of effort into the gun, make a great gun. We, we want people to showcase it, uh, show what it can do. And um, it, it's that simple. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah there's... It's probably embarrassing to. I mean, what do you say to someone that accuses you of like, you know, they're in your pocket, you yeah. bought them out. I mean, the fanboys. These are the horrible things that you hear and yeah. you read about. I read about it. I feel bad when I read it because I know those guys. Yeah. These are wonderful people. These are great people. Yeah, you know it, what's interesting amongst all the people we're working with, um, the, the, wire, the wiring of them, meaning they're very grounded very honest, direct people. I think they resonate well. Their approach to business and life is, it comes from the top down with Frederick. Frederick is the most honest, straightforward, and direct person I know, and that, that filters down in the culture, and, and like attracts like. Mm -hmm. And these shooters are the same way. Um, it, you know, it, some of those comments you see come up, I, I, you know, I wish, or hope at some point they have a chance to talk with some of these people one-on-one because -on -one, they know the reality of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and like you said, it's a negative assumption that um, people don't know what they don't know. But They don't uh, unless we talk about it, and that's why. Sure. And I, I, my hat's off to you guys because to be able to sit here and ask you, these are hard questions. Yeah. You know, but from their perception, they look at the YouTube videos from Extreme Bench Rest, the Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge, mm -hmm. the Pyramid Air Cup, Matt, Ted, Giles, they're always shooting FX, and it kind of leads me to my next question. Um, are they part of an FX product development team? You know, how do they participate in development? You know, what are so, so, do you force them to use only FX at these events? You know, what, what do you say? <laughs> we try to convince them to shoot something other than the impact. Because that's what, that's what these guys think, and I understand why they think it, because it's what's always in their hands, but... But that's what they work with every single day, and that's what they test out, and like, for product, product, like I bounce a lot of ideas with Matt, and I like to work. With Matt is great because he's brutally honest with you, like brutally honest. He's a perfectionist. If you send something to him and he doesn't like, it, or like if you send a picture to him and he doesn't like that, he will just tell me right. He up. won't be polite yeah. about it. Well, yeah. It's the same. Ted takes a very scientific. I mean, he's a scientist. He's a biologist, yeah. and he, I, I love that very scientific approach. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, these guys uh, absolutely. We want them shooting. I mean, you see often like uh, Rolf and Harold, the, the air hunters, those guys are out shooting all the time, more than we would ever shoot. Absolutely want to get product in their hands, get their feedback, because um, that helps get a better better product. Mm -hmm. And so we do uh, work closely with them in that sense of um, interaction, getting feedback. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, look, these, these people provide a valuable service. They're not a charity, so it, there, there is, you know, there's some money involved not to uh, not to eliminate anyone else more to saying look we know what you what the benefit you're doing to us and the industry as a whole we want to we want to make sure you're able to keep doing this
because like I said if they weren't making videos we'd all suffer right and so it's just a little bit of that reciprocal everybody wins it really and it's incredibly time-consuming Oh yeah, you, you know, know, you know to, the to do a vlog and a full review and all the Facebook and the Instagram and all the photographs, it's eighty hours, and it's not eighty hours of like, you know, checking your phone no. and picking your nose. It's, it's hard, intensive. core, intense. It's just incredibly time consuming. You literally have to replace your full time job with it. Yeah. But that wasn't so much the path I wanted to go down with you. But it was just that these yeah. these guys. It's like you alluded to earlier. That you're. They're with you because they they like your stuff, and yeah. they like you, and it's really yeah. that simple. It's they, not like really they're contracted to be only with you, and I mean that's no, the perception. Absolutely not. No, yeah. absolutely not. No. We we're always working with them. Like, as my father told you earlier with the slugs, that's nothing we looked into personally. That was something Matt brought up mm -hmm. when he was in contact with slug makers and such things. That he was really excited about it, and he wanted to do it, and we were quite. Yeah, we didn't want to do it. Apprehensive. Yeah. 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 But he was pushed on and we let him do that. And I would say that's one of the main reasons he continues using FX because we allow him to do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He feels important. He feels like a valued yeah, member of the team. He is important. With you guys. Like, and he does a lot. And he, he's able to express what he wants to do. And he's able to yeah, continue pu pushing the envelope in his way. Mm -hmm. That's what he finds exciting. Mm -hmm. but these people are their own men. Uh, um, and, and honestly, by them being well-rounded and not just doing FX, we, we enjoy that when they do that because that just means <laughs> it gives more weight to what it said. Yeah. But then you also have people that, you know, uh, Ted's a good example. This is not a uh, all-day, everyday thing. He has other passions, hobbies, and, and a job. So and a family. Yeah. And it's a little bit, he's earned, he's like, look, if I want to do something, it's what I want to do. He, he's just doing whatever he's interested in. Mm -hmm. And if that happens to be doing some of the FX, we all benefit, and the industry benefits, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at someone like that, how many people are shooting air guns because of a lot of these individuals. That's the first time I ever saw a video It was of, yeah. that, that really made me want to be a content creator. It was Ted. Yeah. It was his bird watching video with the Ed Gun Matador yeah. <clears throat> 10 years ago. It just, it just, a spark went off of me, and I said, I want to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. It is. That, that's my story. I, my background is sales, marketing, management, teaching, you know, and I just saw that and I, you know, I could do that. And it's, just, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's true. No, it's good. It's where it all comes from. Yeah, it's, it's amazing to watch and to be a part of. It's, it's such a wonderful industry with so many wonderful people, um, fantastic people in this industry and, and the shooters themselves as well.